How do you actually pronounce Mr. Worcestershire Sauce's name? Riesley. If Risley does have a plan, what could it be? Okay, cool. Pronouncing Fontaine names has been nothing short of a roller coaster for an American English speaker like me, but as you could probably tell, today's topic is none other than Riesley. If you like satisfying punches, easy gameplay, and solid cryo damage, this dude is right up your alley because that's exactly what he brings to the table. As usual, this Riesley guide will cover his best artifacts and weapons to general playstyle and team compositions. Without further ado, let's get this guide rolling. As a melee catalyst character, Riesley's playstyle is about as simple as it gets. What separates Riesley from any other character so far is that his attack chain will not be reset if he uses his skill or dashes in between attacks. Because the most powerful hits lie at the end of his attack chain, this is a perfect mechanic for players to utilize instead of forcing the team to have a shielder to prevent getting interrupted before landing the big hits from his attack chain. Using Riesley's skill causes his normal attacks to drain HP on hit in exchange for an increased normal attack damage, and his second ascension talent synergizes greatly with HP drain because it grants him an attack percent buff that stacks up to 30% with increases or decreases in his HP. It is important to note that Riesley will cease to consume HP once he hits the 50% HP mark, so it is actually quite important to pair him with a healer to ensure that he can utilize enhanced normal attacks for the entire 10 second duration of his skill. With Riesley's first ascension talent, when under 60% HP, he gets an enhanced charge attack that heals himself, deals more damage, and costs no stamina. The enhanced charge attack has a 5 second cooldown at C0 and it is easy to see when it's ready to use with the red aura around Riesley. Last but not least, all that Riesley's burst does is deal AoE crowd damage in front of him with a 60 energy cost and a 15 second cooldown. While it's not Ayaka levels of strong, it is nice to use for filler damage. For example, Riesley's combo at C0 is quite tricky and ambiguous because the 5 second cooldown on his enhanced charge attack is a little bit restrictive. Usually from 100% HP, you'll normal attack 8-9 to nine times to reach the point where you'll want to use an enhanced charge attack, and then the second time around where you'll reach low enough HP, your enhanced charge attack may still be on cooldown without an external healer. In this scenario, if it's available, you can use Riesley's burst for damage instead of having to use unbuffed normal attacks while you wait 1 or 2 more seconds for this enhanced charge attack to come off cooldown. At C1 and above, this is not a problem because his C1 will half the cooldown of his enhanced charge attack. His best combo then just becomes his full attack chain with 5 normal attacks into a charge attack because of how easy it is to repeat for enhanced charge attacks. However, for the most part, combo doesn't matter on Riesley because his damage mainly comes from spamming normal attacks and players should pretty much always run Riesley with a healer. Healing changes the exact points in time where you're under 60% HP depending on the frequency and strength of the heal, so the idea of combos changes from executing a specific normal attack chain into simply just using his charge attack whenever you need that emergency healing or it's off cooldown. Moving into artifacts, we're starting to see a common theme among Fontaine DPS characters. Just like Linny and Nouvellet, Riesley also makes wonderful use of the force at Maru Shusei Hunter with the HP drain from his normal attacks. Just keep in mind that with Maru Shusei's crit rate plus the crit rate from his signature weapon or any other crit rate catalyst, it is extremely easy to overcap on crit rate. Although Maru Shusei is technically his best artifact set, the calculations are under the assumption that your build mainly focuses crit damage and your build also needs to replicate that in order to clearly outperform the other options. The same principles apply to the Force at Blizzard Strayer, which is an alternate option when Riesley is used in freeze teams. The Force at Blizzard Strayer will provide some nice benefits like being craftable in the strong box, 4% more crit rate than the Maru Shusei at max stacks, and 15% crowd damage bonus to his ultimate, not just his normal and charge attacks. However, all of these benefits also come with the restriction that you must run Riesley in a freeze team, and some enemies can't be frozen to get the maximum value out of Blizzard Strayer. Ultimately, the choice between Maru Shusei and Blizzard Strayer is completely up to the player. The only other options that don't fall completely behind the main two artifacts that I just talked about are the 4-set Shimanama's Reminiscence and the 2-set Blizzard Strayer with the 2-set Maru Shusei Hunter. Personally, I would avoid the 4-set Shimanawa's Reminiscence, especially if you happen to have multiple constellations which do provide a lot more power to Riesley's Burst. 
He already doesn't get much energy generation from his skill, nor does his optimal build focus a ton of energy recharge, so draining 15 energy can cause you to miss out on his burst for multiple rotations, which is less than ideal. Instead, I personally recommend the 2-set Blizzard Strayer with the 2-set Maru Shusei Hunter because not only does it actually provide competitive damage with his best set, but it also serves as a transitional set while you're still farming the perfect pieces. Having both 2 sets active allow you to easily branch into the 4-set Blizzard Strayer or the 4-set Maru Shusei Hunter whenever you get the right pieces, which is a huge plus for players who haven't spent thousands of resin pre-farming artifacts. Artifact stats are the standard attack percent in the Sands, Crowd Damage bonus in the Goblet, and Crit Damage in the Circlet. Technically, Crit Rate in the Circlet is viable without a weapon or artifact set bonus that provides Crit Rate, but your final goal is to always have the 4-set Maru Shusei or the 4-set Blizzard Strayer with a Crit Damage Circlet for stat optimization. Substats focus Crit Damage, Crit Rate, Attack Percent, Energy Recharge, and Elemental Mastery in that order. Energy Recharge is a nice to have substat for Reesley to ensure that he can get his elemental burst up every other rotation. Usually the benchmark is around 120-130% to 130 energy recharge, but if you pair him with a second Kral character, this number can lower to 110% which is hardly demanding at all. Elemental Mastery is only a substat if you decide to play him in a melt team, otherwise it's practically useless for a freeze or mono Kral team. While Reesley's best weapon options are clearly ahead of the pack, it's nice to see that he can also make good use of the new 4-star catalyst from Fontaine. Cashflow Supervision is Reesley's signature weapon and outperforms everything else by a long shot thanks to its ridiculous 48% normal and charge attack damage bonus at R1. Laetula's Remembrance outputs about 10% less damage than his signature and serves as the second best catalyst option overall. Since Wanderer and Reesley have fairly similar playstyles, you'd think that this catalyst was actually made for Reesley with its identical 48% normal attack damage bonus at R1. Coming in at number 3, we have Flowing Purity, which is not only the best 4-star catalyst for Reesley, but also his best free-to-play option as well. At Refinement Rank 5, this catalyst deals about as much damage as any other 5-star crit catalyst at R1 that I haven't mentioned thanks to its passive that provides a sizable elemental damage bonus after you clear the Bond of Life applied by the weapon's passive. For those who don't know, Bond of Life is a mechanic introduced in Fontaine that prevents healing and can be cleared once you heal a certain amount of HP. Reesley's enhanced charge attack is not consistent enough to both break through the Bond of Life effect and heal himself out of danger, so it is pretty much mandatory to run him with a healer for the best experience with this weapon. Aside from Flowing Purity and any other 5-star crit catalyst, the Witsith and the new 4.1 event catalyst, Ballad of the Boundless Blue, are the final recommended options. I'm sure many players know how ridiculous the Witsith can get with its crit damage and passive buffs at higher refinement, but the R5 Ballad of Boundless Blue actually performs quite well. At max level, the 30% energy recharge stat is more than enough to guarantee Reesley's burst every other rotation, and just like Cashflow Supervision and Tulaitula's Remembrance, its passive can also stack up to 48% normal attack damage bonus. Any other 4-star weapon usually performs worse than the power level of Witsith and Ballad of the Boundless Blue and are not recommended since both Flowing Purity and Ballad are free Fontaine catalysts. There are two main archetypes for Reesley's team building and the first path you can walk down is the Freeze and Mono Cryo path, both with their unique benefits and restrictions. Standard Freeze teams include Reesley, an off-field Hydro Applicator, a Cryo Support, and an Animo character to provide the 4-set Viridescent Veneera effect. The off-field character is most often one of three characters, Xingqiu, Yilan, or Kokomi. Xingqiu and Yilan are generally considered the best Hydro teammates for Reesley because they synergize extremely well with his normal attack playstyle, but Kokomi provides huge amounts of off-field healing as well. Depending on how strong your Kokomi is, she may provide too much off-field healing to reliably get below 60% HP for an enhanced charge attack, but the damage loss isn't that large since you'll always be able to consume HP and get the normal attack bonus from his skill. The Cryo Support can be a pure supportive option for buffs like Shen He for raw damage, Mika for attack speed, or Diona slash Layla for shielding, but can also just be another off-field damage character like Rosaria or Kaya. Kazuha is the best Animo character to use in any Freeze team with his elemental damage buff, but Jean and Sayu can fill in as a healer without a Cryo or Hydro healer, while Lynette and Sucrose are the recommended free-to-play friendly substitutes for Kazuha. Mono Cryo teams will always look to replace the Hydro slot with Shen He as she is pretty much mandatory for Mono Cryo playstyles. 
Without her, you lose a ridiculous amount of damage since every character on the team is able to make use of her icy quills that provide extra cryo damage. The other team archetype that Reesley fits into is Reverse Melt. Thanks to Marushusei's Hunter's crit rate, building Reesley for Melt is much easier compared to other cryo characters like Ganyu who have very high crit ratio requirements. Despite how lenient Reesley's gear is for Melt, that doesn't change the fact that Melt teams themselves have much more restrictive teammate requirements compared to Freeze. A standard Melt team consists of Reesley, Bennett, Shangling, and a flex slot that is usually an Animo support or another crowd character that can either support Reesley or take advantage of Melt as well. Common examples in this last slot include Kazuha or Sucrose for maximum buffing potential, Diona or Layla for minimal crowd application and shielding, or Rosaria for extra melt damage from her burst. Bennett and Shangling are an inseparable duo that not only provides a ton of damage with Shangling's Pyronado, but also provides consistent pyro application for melt reactions. If you do not want to use Shangling, you can replace her with Jean to create what is known as a Sunfire team. Jean's burst will swirl the pyro application that Bennett's burst applies to your active character, creating an extremely strong and consistent pyro application onto any surrounding enemies. If you do not want to use Bennett, then if you have Nahida, her elemental skill allows you to build a team that utilizes the burning reaction for pyro application. The great thing about burn melt teams is that Toma and Deha are extremely viable options for pyro application in the place of Shangling, whereas without the burning reaction, their pyro application is too weak and inconsistent compared to Shangling. However, the disadvantage of burning teams is that Reesley is melee and can take damage from the burning aura that you apply to enemies. Unless your cryo healers like Diona or Mika are cracked, you may find yourself taking too much damage between his normal attacks and the damage from the burn aura, so be careful with this team. All three variations of Melt are great for you to try out depending on which characters you have, and my personal favorite is the Sunfire team given how safe it is with two healers on the team. With that, let me know your thoughts, builds, and teams for Reesley down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this guide or thought it was useful, be sure to support both the video and the channel. The goal is 30k by the end of the year, and with your help, we can reach that goal. Other than that, it's the same as always. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.